Morgan. And I'm Jake, and this is Neverland, Neverland Navigation, Navigation Radio. Radio, where we look to the sky. What's that? A bird? A plane? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's Walt Disney World Nighttime Spectaculars. Yeah, today we're talking about all the, um, all the current nighttime um, spectaculars at each of the parks except for Animal Kingdom, because... They don't have one. They don't have one. They they can't do fireworks because of the animals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have had a night show in the past, but yeah. they don't have one right now. Yeah. Rivers of Light, not a thing. So I liked Rivers of Light. Did you? Did you? I never got the chance to actually see the full thing. And I, this is before we started covering Disney. Mm -hmm. um, I had just heard that it was so miserably terrible. Yeah, people hated it. That I just never <laughs> even stayed for it, which I shouldn't have done because, you know, sometimes people think one way about thing, things that I think a very different way. So I should have just experienced it for myself. But I also would say that I'm in Animal Kingdom far less than I'm in the other parts. Sure. So I didn't have as many opportunities to see it as I would have. You know, the thing is, the I, didn't, I didn't have super high expectations for it because I knew that it was not a fireworks show. Mm. I wasn't expecting fireworks. I was expecting what really what it was. And what it was was like um, they did wa water like they do in some of the Epcot well, and in Fantasmic and projected onto there. And there were a lot of colors and the music from a lot of the Disney movies that had animals. Mm -hmm. And it was like bleacher seating. And I really liked that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I honestly, this is going to factor pretty heavily into what we're about to talk about. But the comfort factor mm -hmm. of watching these shows is a big deal to me. It's the biggest deal to me because like the show can be phantasmic <laughs> or Fantastic. it can be you know not so phantasmic yes. but like if you're not if you're not comfortable and feeling like you can actually pay attention to the show at all right, right. or if you're too kind of overcome by how uncomfortable your surroundings are mm -hmm. I mean how can you make a good memory out of feeling stressed out that's exactly how I feel and so it really impacts my experience Ugh. and whether I can see or not impacts my experience greatly and with rivers of light I was able to see the entire show I didn't miss anything because of my height this is a good um, preference uh, sorry this is a good preface for maybe our um, listeners who maybe haven't seen the video version of the podcast um morgan how tall are you i am five foot two yes and i am like six one or something so i'm or something we have a slight <laughs> he's still growing height <laughs> you, you know how it is um <laughs> my bones are <laughs> still growing um there's a slight height difference between us so it kind of um allows us to give a little bit more perspective different perspective yeah, yeah. for the different you know kinds of vertical people viewing the show whether or not you're you know it's a totally it. different ball game you know for somebody that's five two versus somebody that's over six foot absolutely um i was told i could not put morgan on my shoulders <laughs> so that unfortunately that, yeah that adds a level of complication to the viewing Experience. Yeah. We were going to do a cheerleading pyramid type situation. We were. I was going <laughs> to hold Morgan's heel in my right hand and just extend all the way up. She's got a T pose and one leg out. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Happily ever after. Um. <laughs> so, where are we starting? We are starting in the good old experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Amazing. In the World Showcase Lagoon for their current and not future <laughs> nighttime spectacular, Harmonious. Right. This was the replacement for Illuminations, Which Illuminations Reflections of Earth. Yeah, and Illuminations was around forever. For so long. For my entire life until last Mine year. Mine too. It was from when I was a child until yeah. just recently. I is... couldn't believe it was going away. It felt impossible. Yeah. Um, not that I actually had a super deep... This is going to be controversial. I never had a super deep appreciation for Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. 
I enjoyed the show and I thought it was really well suited to Epcot. Uh -huh. It had a very reverent, respectful, cultural vibe about it. And I thought that was perfect for World Showcase because I felt World Showcase has that kind of like almost museum like reverence for culture and detail. Right. So I feel like it really fit in. I thought the music was great. The show experience itself, I never was particularly compelled by. I didn't watch it very much as a kid. Oh, so yeah. coming back as an adult, I always just kind of felt from like 2017-ish on, I always just kind of felt, well, this has been here a really long time. Yeah. You know, you could kind of feel that it was from the oh, yeah. 90s or the 80s. or. One of my favorite things about Illuminations was um, the Tiki Torch situation. And I'm so glad that those are still... If we're including that in Illuminations, I actually, I love those. I love how he, like, blows, makes that blow sound, like... <sighs> that is Can magical. you explain that? I'm not... The no, words are not coming That's to literally it. He, like, blows into the microphone. The announcer. So there's an announcer. Oh, right. Sorry. You mean, like, in general. Yeah, <laughs> there's, a like, the pre-show announcement for Illuminations... It's like, oh, Illuminations, Reflections of Earth will be beginning shortly. Yes. And then right after you hear that, this announcer would blow into the microphone like he was blowing out candles. candles. And then each of these uh, huge torches that were in front of each country of World Showcase would all be extinguished at the same time yeah. as if he had really blown them out. Yes. And oh boy. It was so magical when that, I was like, a child. That like gave me chills. Yes. I loved it so I, much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... I for me I didn't watch Illuminations a bunch as a child. My family didn't do a lot of shows and stuff like that. But I mean I still remember walking by it all the time. I did watch it a bunch of times. The as Globe, an adult. I'm sure you remember. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, of course. It's iconic. Um and I guess we got off onto Illuminations. But anyway, I really liked how all of the countries were lit up too. Oh, that was that to me is always the best part. Yes. Is when all the countries twinkle. Yes. Like, that is gorgeous. Yes. I did love that. And they kept that for Harmonious, too. Right. So, anyway, I started to talk about Illuminations because they were kind of... Illuminations, huge fan favorite. Like, people love... Huge. And, I mean, how could it not it be when it was... It opened in 1988. If it opened in 1988, of course everyone loves it because it's had all that time to garner these fans and it's been around so long, you figure, well, it's got to be great. You know what I mean? It had that kind of history. Yes. So a lot of people really lived and breathed for illumination. So I feel like Harmonious had these enormous illumination sized shoes to fill. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. The first exposure I ever had to Harmonious was... Well, we also got an in-between show. Oh my gosh, we should. Yeah. I mean, it was it's... very brief. Yeah. And I'm not going to go talk about it a bunch. It was called Epcot Forever. It was actually a really interesting concept because they took... Um, it's an I should it's an interesting concept. The execution was not my favorite, but they took the music from attractions past at Epcot, including um, Kitchen Cabaret. They did Veggie Veggie Fruit Fruit, the original Living with the Land song, Listen to the Land, which was the original name of that attraction, the Soren theme, like a bunch of the the Horizons um, song. If you can dream it, you can do it. A lot of those um, you know '80s sounds of Epcot they took and they weaved the themes together into this loose narration and they did a bunch of special effects to go along with them, like colored lights, um, lasers, and the probably most memorable would be the huge kites being dragged by jet skis in the World Showcase Lagoon. Um, what did you think of Epcot Forever? I didn't... I, I only saw it once because it was such a small amount of time that I was around. Was that during COVID? I believe it was. I feel like you and I watched you know what it the, was? Last, at the la one of the last times we got to see Illuminations. Was, was it right before COVID? I think, yeah. I think Epcot Forever might have opened right before COVID. And then after COVID, it didn't come back. I yeah. feel like that might be it. I don't know for sure. Okay. Well, but either I, way, it was not around for long and right. then it's gone. Yeah. For an interim show, I, was, I liked it. I loved hearing all the old Epcot songs. I just didn't think the visuals went with the songs. Yeah. That, I wish it would have been done better. I, this is something that I, you'll hear me talk about more when we get to um, Disney, the enchantment uh, portion of, of today's podcast. But I wish that they would include more park 
specific stuff in their shows. I could not agree more. When I, when I didn't live in Florida and I was bef- not a pass holder um, and we were getting ready to take a Disney trip, I was listening to park music. Aww. Not like movie music. You know what I mean? I, yeah. to, to, I just feel like if they did, like in Magic Kingdom, the Haunted Mansion and Pirates and all of the small classic, world. small world, all of the classic rides that you you know associate and have that be in the show and then in epcot having soren and some of the stuff that's not around anymore i think that that would be such a better experience because it feels like all of the shows are really based on movies and a lot of them there's there are probably certain movies that are in every show Mm -hmm. would you agree with that a hundred percent is some beauty and the beast. That's what I was going to in say. Everything there is, I feel like there is definitely even now. This is actually maybe even. Um, I was gonna say there. I feel like there's a little cocoa in everything now. There is, is yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think there was cocoa in Fantastic, but. Oh yeah, not beyond like a. Oh yeah, they was don't there? do they don't do Pixar stuff in that, right? I don't think so. That's a really good question. I. I'm like going back through it in my brain. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, but either way, I see what you mean. That yeah. like, there's a lot of there's a lot like, of right overlap. Now, and are you promoting these movies? Right I mean, now, Frozen Two is in two of the three. Right. Into the Unknown is an enchantment, and Show Yourself is in right now is in Fantastic. So there's Frozen like that's that's crazy to yeah. me. And then there's Frozen One in Harmonious. So like it's. I'm, and I'm not saying that there shouldn't be some of that or there shouldn't be a show that that's what its whole deal is, is our animation. Like, I feel like they're going there. They tried to go that direction with the Hollywood Studios thing that they did mm-hmm. where Hollywood Studios has a nighttime show that we're barely going to mention. One of them is uh, focused on Disney movies, mm-hmm. like live action movies. And the other is focused on Disney animated movies. And there's a few fireworks. Neither of those are giant shows that like they're nighttime not so spectacular yes you know they're not it's worth maybe seeing if you're just happen to be there but i definitely wouldn't line up for they're those. basically just projection and neither shows, does anybody else really. you know mm-hmm. it's like what disney does on tower of terror during right. christmas right. where they'll show some like animated um animations who boy projections on the side of the tower of terror yeah. as like a holiday celebration and it's little vignettes yes they basically just do that on the chinese theater and put a bunch of them together with a score and they're like and there you go you're yeah. welcome to me it would make a lot of sense to have a hollywood studios nighttime spectacular that was focused on the animated movies since it is the uh, park of movies if you will and then yes. have magic kingdom's uh, nighttime spectacular be more about the park stuff mm-hmm. or have magic kingdom be really focused on the idea of magic kingdom in general which right. is like exploration and adventure that and would make me so happy. that i feel almost like that is what um happily ever after kind of tried to do because the 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 whole idea of happily ever after and this also was true about wishes was that it really tried hard to fit the vibe of Magic Kingdom, which is about making a wish, having a dream, and then pursuing it. Um, but when you boil those two down, they're still basically clips of movies and clips of songs from movies, right? They, Not- they are, and I, I agree with what you're saying, that what is represented in the park could be better tied into the nighttime spectaculars. But I am saying that they accomplished the overall theme of the park told via these you know different movies or whatever i think they accomplished that even um in in a way that makes some sense but i would i definitely agree that like it would be really cool if for magic kingdom you got more of what's in magic kingdom in the show because there's such a celebration in the fan community of disney of the cultures of these different attractions and it would be nice to see disney kind of pay attention to that in a way that is not monetization. And yeah, because they, they, they want to sell the merch. Yeah, because they sell the merch. They're making movies from almost every attraction. Right. They do. And anyway, so that I have 
I don't have a lot of complaints about the nighttime shows because I really love nighttime shows. It's definitely something you should see, mm -hmm. all of them. Um, but if I had a complaint, it would be that they seem very similar from one to another because of the, okay, this is going to be fireworks with some clips of different mm -hmm. Disney animated movies and clips of different Disney animated movie soundtracks. And it's really funny because they kind of did that to themselves because you would never really have that complaint in the pre-projections era. Because when you think about wishes, it's like, well, that's fireworks over the Magic Kingdom with, like, you know, music from the different Disney properties that are represented in Magic Kingdom. Right. And it tells a story about wishing. Yes. That, yes. of course, that makes perfect sense in the Magic Kingdom. And, and Illuminations used to be exactly. about, yeah, the and different countries, the countries in the world. In the world. Yes, exactly. yeah, Of course, you would never have a complaint about that for Epcot. Right. So now that they've got this visual aspect of the technology, these projections, now the question of when they're curating what goes on the surfaces you've got much more room to be scrutinized based on that visual content. Because they're like, oh, great, we'll put clips of the movies. Okay, that's okay, fine. That's but, fine, but don't do it for every one of them. <laughs> and at what point is every show just kind of a compilation of film clips and that's exactly what viral I mean. moments from right. the songs right. and, you know, that kind of thing? It starts to read a little Disney commercial yes. after a little while for each one. And I honestly... It, happily ever after was one thing it left a it was for harmonious for me it left me feeling like this was really shoehorned into epcot because, harmonious yes i thought you loved harmonious i do like harmonious but the my complaint of my one complaint i've got a couple of complaints about it because i can never complain about just one thing is mm -hmm. that um it doesn't really feel like epcot it doesn't feel it doesn't have that air of cultural decadence that Illuminations had in a very respectful way. Instead, Harmonious to me feels like, you know what the vibe of Harmonious is to me a little bit? It's um, Disney song, sing Disney song. It's like a CD that you would get from the 90s. So it's like Disney songs around the world. Yeah. They're all in their individual languages, which like I don't mind as a concept, but then the execution of, having different new animations inspired by the animations from the movies right. that go along with it, that's when it starts to feel like I'm just listening to a Disney CD or, you know what I mean? It's not, and the effects are beautiful. I love the effects. Right. It's just, I feel like the idea of shoehorning the movie clips into the show, uh -huh. it just made it a little bit forced to me in a way that I didn't love. Right. Now for people that are coming and you don't come all the time, it's going to be an absolutely breathtaking magical experience. The effects alone are just, mm -hmm. I mean, the volume of fireworks, the quality of the laser projections, yes. the, the way they manipulate projection onto water. I mean, technically we're talking about like a masterclass in like entertainment. You absolutely. Know? Um, and so back to harmonious as a concept. So they put these giant, I don't, I'm going to say structures. Jake might be able to be a little bit more specific. Out in the middle of uh, World Showcase Lagoon. Yes. And um, they spray water and then you're projecting onto water. And the animations that they're doing, you you mentioned they're different. They're kind of like, what what did you say it was? The, they're, it looks like paper. Yeah, they've definitely got a little bit more of like that classic 2D element to it. For example, um, in the Jungle Book one, the Jungle Book segment of the show, they've got like paper doll versions of the characters in front of a background. I think it's like that. On for, they do a little bit of that in every song, right? Yeah. So for like in, um, it's some version of that where they right. basically take it's like paper dolls, a two D surface, and they com you know composite the three D animation into this new right flat version um they do that for in tiana in the princess and the frog section it it looks a little bit more oh yeah you're right it looks a little bit more 3d it looks a little bit more textured but it still has a flatness and a simplicity of like almost looking like a children's storybook right but you know? and we're not saying it's in a um not 
awesome no, technology. No, it's not bad. They, they intended for it to look like this in like a fun, artsy, creative Folksy, way. Folksy, yes. artsy, yeah, exactly. So, and then that mostly what it is is the clips from the different songs, but they they do the different languages. Too. Right. So that's the loose, you know, that's the loose theme Tying of the in show. the world showcase. It's right. that they're in the different languages. So look at how Disney music unites the world through song, which first of all, I think is a little presumptuous of Disney. Like I don't, that feels a little bit like boastful to me in a way. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But it also, um, there, there are also moments of it where the payoff is really beautiful. Like when they're, they have this um, sequence that starts with Beauty and the Beast. And Tori and I, my friend Tori and I just watched this last night. So I have a really clear remembering of Harmonious. Wonderful. Um, there's this segment that begins with the rose in stained glass from Beauty and the Beast. Um, projections of that and um, the rose in the water. And then all of a sudden the lights transition out of Beauty and the Beast, still in France to the score from The Hunchback of Notre Dame and the stained glass windows transition to the glass windows of, you know, uh, of the um, Notre Dame Cathedral from the stained glass of the Beauty and the Beast Rose. Mm -hmm. And then the song is out there and it's sung in English and in French. And um, that particular moment to me, they're harmonizing in different languages and it works really well. Um, and then there are some other moments in the show where it just, it doesn't pay off in a way that um, it does as well in that moment for me. Right. A, a thing that I absolutely love about um, Harmonious, as well as uh, Illuminations and whatever else they're bringing next, is that this is a show that you can be, th- there are tons of viewing areas because yeah. you can be anywhere really around the World Showcase Lagoon, and there's you know access for uh, visual from every country. Yes. And um, but your view of the animations, uh-huh. which I'm saying animations and not projections, because there are projections onto the main circular structure, which is like a water screen. Um, there are projections onto that, but the barges that have articulated arms and shoot fireworks, those are screens. Oh, really? Dual-sided screens. So, uh, like, LED screens. Right. So, where you're... there, So, there are three main components, and based on where you are around the world, it's how many of them you can see that kind of give you a better picture of the show. So, if your dead center just walked into World Showcase, looking across the lagoon at the American Adventure... Um, you can see all three. If you're a little bit off to the side, even in like the UK, even mm-hmm. that shallow into World Showcase, you only see two of the three. Okay, but components. aren't they all doing the same? Oh, you mean you're only seeing two of the three components? Yeah, so really? you can see, yeah, Tori and I just did it in the UK and we can only see the left barge and the center circular component. We couldn't see the right barge at all. Were they diff- would they be different though? They show they show <laughs> it's funny because they'll do that thing where one shows item A, one shows item B, and then they'll switch and then they'll be complementary. Okay. So like you do always see everything, but you're also only getting like two thirds of what the visual experience is supposed to be. Like you can tell it's telling a story with the way that it's alternating. The right. things, but if you're at certain points of World Showcase, you're like you're just watching two screens doing different things at the same time, so you don't get the same mental picture as having two symmetrical features and one main feature. Instead, you just have a main feature and a side feature that don't always even necessarily interact. Mm-hmm. So it it can be a slightly disjointed experience depending on where you are, but I would say That is only for maybe a third of the entire World Showcase. And that's probably only for people that analyze it in the way that you do, I think. Because, like, I don't think about it that much. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm watching the the show, and there's the music, and... There's a lot to see. Yeah, there's so much going on. Fireworks, pyrotechnics. Even just if I only saw one of the things, I'm like, oh, okay, this is awesome. 
you know, there's the, there's the Coco song and there's Miguel on the screen. Right. I don't, I'm not like expecting interaction between different screens and all of that. So, right. Okay. So, so That's I, reasonable. it might be a little bit of, um, a me problem. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm no, just, I get it. I'm just saying, I wonder if other people would have even noticed. That's that's a very good point. Um, and certainly, but I will say to Harmonious credit, um, you, there are certainly a lot more viewing angles to see Harmonious that are um, acceptable than there are for things like Enchantment, which, you know, yes, th- you have to be in longitude 45, latitude this when the wind is blowing a certain direction. And, and seven feet tall. And the crowds are in the right place. You mm-hmm. have to be wearing five foot tall right. platform shoes have, in order to see the show. I have major issues with um, that and we will talk about that when we get to that one. Um, a thing that I love about, in, in addition to all of the different places that you can absolutely for, for free after, of course, your park admission, go up and see the show is that this is the only one where you can actually be dining and be watching the show. Now you have to score some amazing reservations at the exact perfect timing and then hope that you get a table, but right by the window or or outside where you can see it, Mm -hmm. but it can be done with a lot of planning. Yeah. Or Um, if you're like us, you uh, just do it accidentally and it's wonderful because that's one time we, well, I, I booked that, you're talking about, uh, Hacienda? Yes, and Chefs de France. Oh, yes. Chefs de France was definitely an accident. But um, with Hacienda, I did book it with the intention of, of hope. You, with the intention of seeing the fireworks if we were able to get a oh, good table. yeah. Oh, we did not go in there and beg for a, a table by the window. No. But we did get one. Because, we, did, we didn't even ask. Yeah. Why, we didn't why didn't that. we beg for a table by the window? Why didn't we? Yeah. Because we didn't want to... Well, I I think because I would never do that. I just that's what I mean. You know what I mean? I, I we don't. Didn't, I was gonna say we didn't want to be those people, but I don't want to make it sound like. Well, I I think it's one thing to ask. Would you happen to have, you know, seating by the window? Sure, it's especially a, if you're somebody that comes once every ten years. Absolutely. And this is your once in a lifetime trip. But I also am saying like there are people. We wouldn't do that. There are people in the world who would say that their vacation is ruined because. Uh huh. They didn't get the window side seat. And I'm right. just saying, don't be those people. Oh, yeah. You it's know? not a nice thing. Yeah. D- just just from the perspective of people who have known cast members and people who have worked in the service industry for a big portion of our lives, mm-hmm. please be kind to these cast members who are right. just trying to do their jobs and not trying to ruin your vacation. You know what I mean? Yes. Just if it's from important to you to see um, harmonious from a restaurant viewpoint, you're going to need to book more than one restaurant at the right time in hopes that one of them works out. I have heard Rose and Crown is very good. Right. Chefs de France was actually not good. For, no. uh, we There's the walkway that, you know, the Epcot loop walkway, mm-hmm. or World Showcase loop walkway that, that was kind of blocking our view. So we could see the fireworks, but we couldn't see the show. But with... Um, it's also set too far back that's, yeah. into the France Pavilion just at all. Like, right. even if there was nobody out there on the walkway, I still feel like we wouldn't even be able to see most of the show. Yes. Just because it's so far, like, that walkway is so wide that mm-hmm. it just being behind it at all made it hard to see. I, I have heard that you can see pretty well from the um, restaurant in France that's on the second level, Monsieur mm-hmm. Paul's, uh, when I was not living in Florida. Mm-hmm. I booked that that restaurant in hopes for that, and again, even though that for us that what we didn't know we were going to be able to go more than once every five years or something, we did not ask to sit by the window. They did not sit us by the window, but they had a bunch of open seating by the window, which was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't get to see it from up there. But yes, I've heard that. I mean, La Hacienda was amazing because they yeah. actually shoot some of the fireworks. What from the top of the building? Yeah, or like, right next to it. Yeah, right, and like right below it, because you're you're at these huge floor to ceiling windows, and then you're like overhanging right the World Showcase Lagoon. So there's like one of those big pyrotechnic cannons right underneath the window yes. that like shoots right out, and it like it's incredible. But also, almost most importantly, they pump in the music. Yes. Oh, yes. Most importantly, for sure. Because Chef de France, they didn't. Right. They didn't. That was weird. Why would you not? Because some on in Ohana, which is in the Polynesian, when 
enchantment is going on, they pump in the music. Or they used to. And I haven't have been to there in a long time. squint to see the castle there. Right. So I mean, why would you not far. do that? It's Chefs the entire France. Seven Seas Lagoon away. But I know Chefs de France is not owned by Disney. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's <clears throat> what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> Spice Road Table Morocco is also fantastic viewing. Also something right on the lagoon. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rose and Crown, I think I already mentioned that. Those are the ones that I have heard that yeah. people have the best. Because those are the ones that sit like... On the correct over. side of the pathway. Yes. Because if you're at one of the ones across the pathway, anything in Japan, right. any of that stuff, you're not... You can't just book a World Showcase restaurant and assume it's going to have firework viewing. Uh, La Cellar, La Cellier? Yeah, in is, Canada. Yeah, that's not... There's no viewing at all. It that's looks like you're in a basement. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. I love that restaurant. Don't get me wrong. That's but... a good tip, though, is that you have to make sure you've got one of those um, lagoon restaurants if you want to see the fireworks show. Yes, and I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. If it was, like, a absolute must-do for me, I would book more than one. Yeah. And so you should also book it, like... 30 minutes before the fireworks or have 15. the mentality that like okay then maybe a maybe a restaurant is not ideal right. for me because my also... mentality is that if i'm booking a restaurant during the fireworks i might not get to see the fireworks yes you it's have just, to think that it, because you cannot put all your eggs in one basket if yet. your top priority is seeing the fireworks with your family then you just get to the world showcase early and get a good spot. Right. Or do the dessert party, which I think it would put you at it in like a guaranteed situation. Sure. The dessert party has like a spot down there on the lagoon. Yeah. You're standing. So that puts, that's a little bit tougher Mm. for those of us that are short, Mm -hmm. but, um, but you'll have a good spot anyway. So you might be able to get railing and be the only one. Especially if you know that going in with the, all the dessert parties, I learned the hard way. It doesn't, guarantee you that you'll be able to see you still have to get to the viewing part early enough to get in the front if you're short yeah um speaking of you did the one for enchantment right i did okay so why don't we talk about disney enchantment disney enchant or unless you have anything else to say about harmonious no i don't think so so it's a that's a nightly show it goes at uh like nine o'clock yeah okay yeah 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 um, I mean, that's not, it's not nine o'clock every night. I shouldn't say that, but it's nine o'clock most nights. And that one is, will be replaced soon. Yes. So Disney announced at D23 that they, for Disney's 100th anniversary, um, will be offering a new nighttime spectacular in Epcot that will replace Harmonious, which was kind of shocking because shocking, cause it Harmonious just is a year old, yes. you know, it's and brand Illuminations new. lasted for, I don't even know how many years. Yeah. Ago. So, uh, you know, something. take that for what it is. Some people might say that that's a sign that Disney like has received feedback that guests have not enjoyed Harmonious as much or whatever the case may be. We, I don't know that we'll ever really know, but all that we have to take it as is that, well, now I we think have, that's a safe bet though. I, I mean, I would... Why else would they do it? I would think logically that makes sense, but I would also think that there could be... With Disney, there are things that we may never know in terms of, like, well, maybe they found that there's a technical limitation to Harmonious where, okay, maybe these barges can't withstand this in the way we thought, or maybe the fireworks are less safe than we imagined. Oh, interesting. They could be... Well, no, they've been doing the fireworks forever, because the fireworks are part of Illuminations. I just I, meant I, the, speci- the particular, like, um, direction of, like, you know what I mean? Like, the sure. calibration of, like, maybe they have figured something out that we don't yeah. know. Yeah, and know, it I may hadn't just even thought be, about that. Maybe it's more expensive to run each night than they thought it would be. That, I think, would be Disney. Well, when they I hear that, they're like, I have heard these are wildly expensive. expensive. Yeah. Okay. I have All right, to. so to... Enchantment. Enchantment. Um, Enchantment is Magic Kingdom's current nighttime spectacular. Um, also to be replaced. Also on the chopping block, um, but it did take the place of Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After um, was the first nighttime spectacular in Walt Disney World that really utilized the projection mapping technology mm-hmm. on Cinderella Castle, um, which is a bit controversial in terms of if you like that or if you like just the fireworks like Wishes, which was... I mean, if you like just the fireworks, you can definitely just see the fireworks, right? That is very... That's it's what a lot very of difficult to see the projection. So, I mean, you'd have to want to mm. see it if you... You'll have to go way out of your way to see it if you want to see it. And therein lies the true... Issue? Yeah, the true controversy of these, like, more recent Cinderella Castle Nighttime Spectaculars. Sure. Is whether or not you think... 
well, this technology is fascinating. This technology is amazing. People deserve to see this. This has to be what Disney nighttime spectaculars are doing. Or do you think, well, not everyone in the park can experience that amazing new technology because, I mean, people who have limited mobility, I would think this would be incredibly hard for them in whatever situation because they have to be sitting down um, in some cases. You or, see a lot of people in wheelchairs doing it, though. Yeah, but, like, I wonder how well do they ever see anything, right. you know? That's true. Um, short people, children, um, the children on the shoulders issue where, while well, the children are too short to see it without being on the shoulders, but if you put them on shoulders, you're, like, blocking. seriously blocking the view of everybody behind you. There's a lot of components that complicate people's opinions of Happily Ever After and Disney Enchantment because there's this sense that there's a very small chunk of the audience that's actually experiencing it how it was designed to be experienced. Okay. Which is projections, fireworks, and music all at the same time. Okay. Well, okay, so so here's how I feel about it as somebody who is on the short side. Um, I can't ever really see the projections. Mm -hmm. We've gotten good, good, a what you would call a good spot up in the middle, and um, I still haven't been able to see because there's people in front of you, and mm -hmm. there are people in front of you with kids on their shoulders, and there's people in front of you holding their phone up in the air. Um, everybody in front of you is holding their phone up in the air. So I don't, I have never really been able to experience it in that way. So for me, it's not, it, it for me personally, it's not a must do. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I would never say, oh, since everybody can't experience this, I want you to take it away. Because like we went with um, my husband's cousin and his girlfriend that were in from Germany and they were blown away by it where I couldn't get past the emotions I had from feeling like I was in a sardine can. Oh, yeah. That's I, another huge You have thing. to be able to handle the kind of anxiety or, or you have to be somebody that doesn't get anxiety from being legit smushed. Mm -hmm. Shoulder to shoulder. I mean, shoulder to shoulder. If the person behind you coughs, that is on you. Mm -hmm. Like, you all the smells you have to be okay with all that mm -hmm. i am not a person that's really okay with all of that mm -hmm. i have a lot of anxiety when it comes to being smushed in a crowd um so for me the entire time that we were i we, i went with them we did it I, we made sure they got a good spot they absolutely loved it i was having like anxiety the entire time because of that smush feeling on top of the fact that i couldn't really see anything because it's not just that there are people in front of you that might be taller than you. They are an inch in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like where your toe stops, there's like an inch or two inches or three inches. And then there's that person. So if they're even the same height as you, you mm -hmm. can't see in front of you. Yeah. So all I got from it really was the fireworks mm -hmm. and the music and the, um, you know, the audio storytelling part. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to see the castle like halfway up. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of squirmed around enough to see, was it Walt that was on or was it Roy that they projected up there? I think, I think at least the voice of Walt and definitely video of Roy. Yeah. Okay. I, I squirmed enough to see that part, like tiptoes and anyway. Stilts. Uh, yeah. Um, but, but for the most part that the projection part is an experience is not an experience that I really get to have mm -hmm. when we did the Halloween thing, we just kind of wound up with really great spots. Now the Halloween party is less capacity than any other normal Disney day. Mm -hmm. um, but we also kind of lucked into a spot. Um, we were, it was like a walkway in front of us. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have people inches in front of me that blocking my view. Exactly. Yeah. In the situation where we went to go see enchantment with my husband's cousins, we also had a taped off walkway in front of us. And I was like, yes, but the, at some point, nobody cared about the taped off walkways. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, I don't... And I, that I happens was like, every time. Yes. And I was like, During oh, enchantment. do the cast members not keep this as a walkway? No. no. they. I think that they lose control. I, or, yeah. Or they're told to stop caring at 15 minutes to the show or whatever. And I think where they really lose it is when everyone takes that big step forward. 
because then all of this empty space frees up at the back of each of these taped standing sections. Mm -hmm. And so there's this massive rush to fill in that space. And then people who don't make it all clump on the walkways and you can't even see the walkway anymore. Like it's over. Oh my gosh. So, so all of that anxiety, right. Mm -hmm. Is too much for me to enjoy what's happening anyway. So I don't even want to see the fireworks from there, even if it gives me a glimpse of the top of the castle. And, um, I am also a person that gets annoyed with people around me that are being selfish and ruining other people's experience. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, in the middle of a crowd of fireworks, that will definitely happen. That is so, like prime time for people to be taking flash photography, having children on their arms flash, or shoulders. Or shoulders. Arms is fine. Yeah. If, you're, if you're holding your child. That's not and, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Their shoulders. If you're holding yeah. your child and they're at face with you, like face level with you, that's totally, Two totally fine. Fine. Uh, putting them on your shoulders is is understandable but very very selfish you're not just blocking the view of the person behind you you're blocking the view of like a bunch of people behind the you. the whole cone of human beings behind yes, you yes yeah. and that is a, a it, that's a controversial hot topic you know what i mean because some people are like well i don't care i this paid for my, this yeah uh, well so did we you know i mean like yeah. maybe i'm not a good example as a pass holder but so did a lot of the people behind you anyway i so if you're a person that see something like that, but immediately can move on with your head. Like you're kind of like that, right? You, you, you don't focus or do you? It depends. Um, there are some, honestly, for me, a still crowd is a lot less anxiety inducing than a moving crowd. Uh -huh. Like the rush toward the monorail at the end of the night yeah. makes me well, you, panic, like in an emergency kind of way. But you have to do that when the fireworks are done, when the show's done. Yeah. Everybody starts moving. That's, I mean, that's the same rush. But I'm talking about with the selfishness. Do you, you see it and then go, oh, that's ridiculous, and I then move on with your life? I am much more, in those moments, I if I'm with you or if I'm with my fiancé or if I'm with my friends, I'm thinking, oh, no, they're going to be so upset. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking about yeah. that much more than I care because I whatever. I, first of all, I'm a pass holder, and I'm going to come and see it again, so I don't even care. Right. But more importantly than that, I will be, if I'm next to a child who then can't see, yes. or I'm next to whatever. That's or, what's going on or in my Or with my head. friends or who can't see, right. or like you, who I know has a hard time seeing stuff. I am just, I spend the whole time thinking about how much it sucks for them, so I don't even enjoy it at that point. It's much more that than I can't stop looking at the person taking a flash photo, because if it was just me, I could. Right, right. I could see past that and I could enjoy the show. Because well, I feel I like that's, that is how I am too. I am more focused on the frustration because of the injustice to the, all the people that did pay a lot of money to be there. They are there on their once in a lifetime trip yeah. and now you're ruining it. Your flash, flash never ever is necessary at a nighttime uh, thing. You don't need flash to video. Or you don't on need a flash. dark ride. You, hey, you it people doesn't taking work. flash photos of dark rides. They're dark for a reason. Uh -huh. They don't want you to see stuff that you're taking flash pictures of. Because it ruins the magic. You're ruining other people's experience by doing that because you're breaking the fourth wall. You're taking out the element of mystery and you're taking out the, the element immersion. of a controlled environment. Yeah. That's what... If you're taking pictures on the Haunted Mansion with your flash on, you're a jerk to everybody yeah. else around you. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yes, I always make sure my phone is not on. So enchantment, Gosh. okay. So those are the circumstantial situational issues right. around just the viewing of enchantment. So that's, that's not my even issue. talking about the, the show. content of enchantment at all. Because you have to get past all of that to even start to think about what the presentation is supposed to be. Sure. You're not even, like, all of that work that the Imagineers put in the story, imagination, pyrotechnic, audio mastering, recording of new vocals, layering and sampling, mixing and mastering, all of that goes completely out the window for so many people because they don't even get the chance to lay eyes on it in the way that it was intended. Right. They don't even get a chance. And I don't even bother with it anymore. So here's the difference between Happily Ever After and Enchantment for me. Happily ever after, that content I'm talking about, all that procurement from these Imagineers, the content and the story was stirring, emotional, worth it for me to think, maybe I'll fight. Maybe I'll fight that crowd to see this because it makes my heart so happy mm -hmm. with the artistry it was done with. Disney Enchantment, I, it's, not, it's not good enough 
for me to justify ever wanting to do that, Uh ever. Um, I never want to stay for Disney Enchantment. I have seen it, like, twice. Mm -hmm. And it's been here for a minute. I've seen Harmonious probably. Have you seen it since they changed it? No. Mm -hmm. But haven't they only changed, like, five minutes of it? Yes. I don't like the whole thing. I know, I know. So, like, that's not true. I like the Frozen part. Mm -hmm. I like the Into the Unknown part where they shoot the crystals out onto Main Street. I think that's cool. But also only half the audience can see that. I not More I, logistical problem. I don't think it's half the audience. They can see Not that. even, no, you're no. saying? Yeah, that's like another like logistical. If you're down on Main Street, then you can't see the castle. In, so... in trying to make it better, because they're aware of the problem we're talking about. Yes, they're trying. They're... They thought, okay, we'll add projections to Main Street. Just like they do in Disneyland. In Disneyland, during the Disneyland Awesome Mix or whatever that thing was that they did forever, which was the Sleeping Beauty Castle projection show and the Main Street projection show that happened at the same time, they that was the introduction of Main Street projections. They're like, look, for all the people who can't see the castle. They did that here. For me, it makes it worse. For me, it makes me think, okay, so now I can't see the castle or I can't see Main Street, you or if I'm... see them at the same time, yeah. It, yeah, to me, it's an irritation in my brain. It's distracting more than it is, actually. Which really sucks, because when they first announced the Main Street projections, I was like, amazing. I know, I, I know. Wait. In my head, it, it seemed a lot better than... I, but, but I do think that it is a good step in the right direction. I do, too. I because think if it you're... was done so poorly. I think if they did it right, it might actually really work. What do you think if they have basically the stuff that's on the castle going on on Main Street so you don't even need to be looking at the castle? Morgan and I have discussed on this podcast before, we almost wish they were those concert-style screens on the sides of the castle so that everyone could actually see the show. Yeah. Not Maybe not to that degree. Some imagination, some imagineering version of yeah, that. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, yeah, We're not <laughs> doing the work for you. But <laughs> if they took that concept and they obviously had things that were specifically just for Main Street. I think you have to do that if you're going to projection map on a completely different surface. But then have, you know, windows that show in the projection or whatever, windows or ovals or little wisps of magic that show, like, a selection of what's going on in the castle so that you can see, you can get a sense for the story by looking at whatever you're looking at. I think that would be an improvement. Right now, if you're looking at the Main Street projections, you're still not really getting a feel for what's happening on the castle because they're completely different. Like, the castle might have Elsa on it right now, but around you there's just flowy wisps of magic. Yeah. Well, that doesn't show you what's going on, really. It just, but it's better than nothing, don't you think? It, no, because it distracts me. I don't, I don't think it is better than nothing. And distracts cha- you from what? What's going on in the castle? In Enchantment, I think if I'm looking at the castle, I'm missing Main Street. If I'm looking at Main Street, I'm missing the castle. Well, if I'm on Main Street, I cannot see the castle at all. It is guaranteed. So then for me, it's better than nothing. But so like it's a consolation prize when it could be showing you a glimpse of what's on the castle in a way that's actually accessible to you. Yeah. That would be a great use of the Main Street projections. And I think when they bring Happily Ever After back, it might be almost brand new. Instead of accents being what's going down Main Street, actually be the characters. A combination of, like, have some accents for, because Main Street is a, Main Street, Meryl, (laughs) Main Street is a particular shape, so they have, like, they can't just throw the castle on there. Right. But, like, if they do those, you know, a couple unique accents for Main Street, but then they also show what's going on on the castle, sure. then I think you don't or lose. Or even side you, characters. Yeah, or, yeah, you just make it more accessible mm-hmm. when you do that. You know what I mean? Instead of making it kind of this all-or-nothing situation, or even a consolation prize. It doesn't have to be a consolation prize to see Main Street. You could be getting a very similar experience looking at a Main Street building that you are looking at the castle, mm-hmm. If they do it right, you yeah, know? yeah. I don't think Disney Enchantment did that though. I think right. I think the execution of the idea was sloppy. I don't think people connect to the story, and I hope that I don't. I didn't know there really was a story. Is there? It's loose. It's loose. I think. I think. Well, the happily ever after oh, one was loose too. <laughs> the happily ever after one was loose too, but it was at least a more cohesive narrative. Then what's going on in Enchantment, which very much just feels like a slideshow. 
Happily Ever After was split into these segments that made a lot of sense, kind of like Fantasmic. You know, in a Fantasmic, the story is pretty clear. Very clear. <laughs> I feel like Happily Ever After accomplishes a fairly clear, discernible storyline. Enchantment. Enchantment. We is... figured that's out the window. <laughs> you know, they just. Hey, really... look at all these movies we did. Yeah, it's yeah. very much that. Well, also, when they brought it out, and we have talked about this before, but when they brought it out, they made it seem like it was going to be park oriented right and then people were upset it is the 50th anniversary of walt disney world not of your movies and there was no mention of walt disney world in it when it came out now they've added like five minutes and they did put a couple of um nods to a few attractions walt was speaking yeah i think that's what the show should have been and for those five minutes i love those five minutes i bet i bet i would love those five minutes too i'll see them before they go away yeah and and I will say, and then this I'll show leave. For- <laughs> <laughs> I'll skip the rest of Enchantment so I can beat the monorail rush. We are not saying though that if you're if you don't come very often, you shouldn't go see it. We're no, just you should see something. Yeah, we're just explaining, you know, the the highs and the lows. You're just gonna have a better time when Happily Ever After comes back. If Jake it's, is, you know, huge into Happily Ever After. See, I never saw the projections for Happily mm-hmm. Ever After. So I never but fell in love with But even with Happily this. Ever After, I had the same... I love the content of Happily Ever After much more than I love the content of Enchantment. But the, like, the situation of it is the same. Like the, the Main Street problem of finding yes. like a spot where you can see stuff. And the fact that it's really a lot of clips. Yeah, but somewhere where you really don't have that problem and there's really not a bad seat in the house, though, is Hollywood Studios. Yes. Which is funny because I don't know why, but I would assume that as time goes on and they introduce more nighttime spectaculars, they would do better at being um, able to make the show something that everyone can see. Mm-hmm. But the, the most easily viewed nighttime spectacular right now is Fantasmic. Right. There's not a bad seat in the auditorium. And, and, that, and that's the oldest one. So this is the auditorium for Fantasmic in Hollywood Studios, totally different ballgame in Disneyland, by the way, if you're going to see the Disneyland when do, this is, they're not the same. The, the viewing This is not does the not same. apply. This does not apply. In any way. But in Hollywood Studios, it is stadium seating. Yes. And also... A huge stadium. Yeah. The, I, we talked about it. I don't think you could really sit anywhere and not see everything. Nope. I mean, if I was sitting and there was somebody super tall in front of me, then I might have to like move a little bit to see. But... There is a little bit of that element I was talking about before, and I guess I'm only talking to the people who are really paying attention to this kind of thing, is in Fantasmic, the setup is that there is a mountain upstage in the like background. There's like this big mountain thing mm-hmm. that's like the stage structure. And then there's this river, this moat of, you know, water fountains and all that kind of stuff in front of it. And there are on that moat, there are these two big fans of water right. on either side. And then one in the middle. That are like screens and then one like slightly before that in the middle that shows the same thing. So you probably, most places, unless you're like dead smack in the middle of section, you're only going to be able to see two out of those three screens. But those screens show exactly the same thing on all the screens. You're not supposed to see more than one screen. Exactly. It's meant for you to be it focused on the one. It designed for yes. you to only see one. And that is so much more efficient in my brain yes. than what's going on with Harmonious in that situation. Um, not that that's necessarily a deal breaker, because I still think Harmonious is a good show, despite that. But I think that Fantasmic nails perspective. Yeah. You, no matter where you are, you're not distracted by what you can't see, and you can see one of everything. Right. You win. You they, did it. And you they know? do a really good job with the, the stadium where, I mean, it's really angled down so that you... Even if I, I would have to have somebody really tall in front of Right, me. yeah. And it's even not. then, like, so much of the show is high up. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're seeing... I don't, yeah. There's, I, there's, I don't think anybody can see. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody can now, see. Now, what could happen is you could get wet. The, but you do have the choice. Yes, you just need you to really know. Only, I'm just telling you so you, you know. And there are signs that say splash zone in the front. So, like, you, it's really your fault if you if you are just really Those not, are not paying attention. Those are not joking. <laughs> no, no, no. That you do get soaked. But that's but that's the beauty of it. You, you only might get, want that. You only get soaked if you want. Right. We didn't want to get wet. We didn't sit that close. Right. End of story. We saw everything. We weren't wet. 
perfect night. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know wonderful. what I mean? Like, it, the viewing experience of Fantasmic lets you focus on the content of the show right. in a way that none of the other ones do. And that's crazy because Fantasmic is the oldest one. Right. They've had this information this whole time and they're still not like putting the pieces together in a way that they did with Fantasmic. Now, Fantasmic in that way is great. But in other ways, because this is the oldest one, it also shows its age sometimes. Don't yeah, you find? I do. I do. It, and this just reopened in Walt Disney World. And they did yeah. make some changes. And we went to opening night. We did, yeah. Um, for you guys. For you. So we, could tell, <laughs> so we can talk about this and so we can tell you about, you know, the experience. Right, right. And see what the changes were. Um so they did make some changes, but they also left some stuff that we did feel like was aging it a mm-hmm. little. The things that they replaced, um, I think, needed to be replaced. But then they left some stuff that I thought, why not do that too? While you're in there poking around in the show, why not take out the montage of villains whose faces are melting into one another? Yes, if you've seen the the Michael Jackson black and white video, mm-hmm. this is that, just with villains where their fa- it's like their face Morph. morphs into yeah. another villain's face. And they they showed that villain from Hunchback of Notre Dame a lot. Claude Frollo, what is he doing? I know, anyway. and he's that Hunchback is also in um, Harmonious, and I just feel like See, I don't, why are we doing multiple clips of the same movies when you guys have thousands? And not only that, though, I think Claude Frollo, my fiance, is going to kill me because Punchback <laughs> is his favorite. And his favorite Disney song is Hellfire, which is insane. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, the whole, um, the whole. Him and him alone. <laughs> yeah, Claude Frollo being in that show is wild to me. Like, that is, talk about an outdated villain. Yeah. Who cares? I don't care. I'd much rather see. One of I'd rather see Isma from Emperor's Heck New yes. Gro- never represented in anything. Oh, I would love to see that. I, Hades is in that show, which what I think an is underrated great. movie. Yeah, what an underrated movie. Mm. What what else? There's there are so many villains I would love to see more of that I oh, that Mother Gothel could be in yes. there from Tangled. That would be spectacular. It does feel like they didn't. I guess they did represent like Frozen Two, which is semi new. But most yeah. of the stuff is is older stuff but I, I, they took I don't know how they too, decide. <laughs> first of all they took way too long to bring Frozen 2 into the parks mm-hmm. I know it, it's been years five or now. six years and we're just and now, Moana we're just getting this I feel is, like Moana is yeah. now making like a well Moana was in Happily Ever After okay. so that that at least had something but Frozen 2 like we are so this was the mo- the highest grossing animated movie of all time Yeah, and it is if you don't count The Lion King well, Disney doesn't consider the live action Lion King to be animation, even though it is completely animated. So, like, well, because they, they're trying. What are you talking about? The Lion King re the Lion King live action movie that John Favreau directed that came out with Beyonce. With Beyonce, that movie Disney considers to be live action. That okay. movie is not live action because but not one single shot CG, of that right? movie is live. It is all CG. So Disney considers that to be live action. Are you saying that did better than Frozen 2 in the box office? Lion King is the highest grossing animated movie of all time. The f- one that came out in the 90s? No. This one is the highest grossing animated movie of Are all time. Are you kidding me? But Disney does not claim that because they say it's not li- it's not animated it's live action. So I didn't know it did well. Frozen 2. Most I don't know anybody that loves that movie. Considered by Disney, Frozen 2 is the highest grossing animated movie of all time. I'll take it. It, it crazy. Just, I'll still take it because that I I cannot. Yeah. I don't want to come to terms with li- the live action live action in quotes Lion King being their best movie. I don't understand. <laughs> so, oh man, yeah. But anyway, Frozen Two. So they did flash up uh, one of the during. They flash up a lot of characters, right? There's it's, like a, there is. So what Fantasmic does so right is they take that idea of montage, which is yeah. the basis of all of the other ones. And they're like, we'll just do that a little bit. Really fast. Yeah. We'll do bubbles that have a bunch of different Disney characters mm-hmm. in them. And then we'll do little montages that are kind of interludes between 
the main, like there are segments of Fantasmic that are live actors, practical effects, huge, you know, moving right. things. In between that, that's when we'll do the montages. We'll interlude. Yes, and they go fast. So and they're, they're amazing. They are good. But for five seconds, a character from Encanto flashed up. Mirabelle. Yes. Yeah. And everybody lost their collective mind. That's all it took. Yeah. So why are you not doing more of that, I wonder? But anyway. Yeah. The, why, I, why are we waiting six years before we add them, like, full on? The hits. It's not... I'm not talking Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah, I'm not talking about the ones that flop. Right. I'm talking about the ones that, like, are now cultural staples that everybody knows every yes. song from. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I was glad they did. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that Frozen 2 is, you know, it was an enchantment in Into the Unknown in a limited capacity. Mm. But this, that's also just last year. But this is like... Representing Norway, though? Is that why? And what? Oh, you said enchantment. I was thinking of Harmonious. Oh, no, no, no. My bad. They do, in, in Harmonious, they do the na, na, na. Oh, right, hey, right, right. Uh, They do that to represent Norway. Okay. For whatever that's worth. But yeah, I appreciated the Frozen 2 representation in um, Fanta- in the new Fantasmic. I also appreciated the Moana, and I also appreciated that little glimpse of Encanto, because at least they're, you know... Acknowledging They're it. trying to keep the updated stuff in there. I think they could do a better job, though. Yeah, I, I, I guess it seems like there's too much fear in, oh, this is new, maybe we shouldn't. But, I, I mean, like, it, I, we don't talk about Bruno was number one in America. Number one song. Like, you, know, you, can't, you can't ignore that either. I think... It, it, to me, that song is becoming, or be, seemed like it was as popular as Let It Go back it, Yeah, day. it did better. It charted higher, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, you know, you can't deny that kind of success. You couldn't be around a kid without hearing that. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly, exactly. And so I feel like that actually some type of we don't talk about Bruno sequence or some type of um, it could have been cool to have Antonio's room with all the animals as projections oh, yeah. or something like something like that to me would have made more sense than doing a Mulan thing which is what they did right um, I thought Mulan was actually a little out of place there but I think because Mulan is underrepresented in the parks they thought that this would be a good op- a good opportunity to include some Mulan, so I get it. Um, but yeah, I, th- I definitely think the show could have used a little more Encanto. Maybe Happily Ever After, when it comes back, maybe they've got some Encanto that they're thinking they're going to put in there, so maybe that's why. You know, maybe, we, yeah. You never know how the wheels are. And now we've got another Epcot show coming, so, you know, yeah. they, these characters can find themselves anywhere. Yeah. So some of the things about Fantasmic that stayed the same that we do love is like the story, mm. very clear story. You're in Mickey's nightmare. Imagination. Yes. Yeah. Well, nightmare. Yeah. Right. right? They say that's because even the greatest imagination can turn to a nightmare. Yeah. Like he, his dreams get hijacked by uh-huh. the villains. And you know? him, Mickey being there and then Mickey being in another place in a different outfit. That's fine. They did add a, costume switch like a dress switch for Elsa Mm -hmm. which I did not notice during the show and it's crazy because I was looking for it my one my one complaint about the frozen segment that we saw is exactly what you're talking about and I think maybe maybe it was just maybe this is an example of like maybe this this is better viewed from some seats from other seats type of thing yeah maybe this is but also it was their because that was a live character Right, that so, was a live person. And that person was on the other side from where we were. Right. We were not in the middle, we were to the left. Yeah, and she was in the middle, basically. I would say even to the right a little. Maybe, yeah. Um, so, like, we definitely didn't have... We had a good... We could definitely see what she was doing. Right. It was just in that moment with the way the lights and mist were situated. Yeah. I feel like maybe we missed out on I that I was looking bit. for it because, like, Jake saw Frozen on Broadway and mm. I saw Frozen uh, as a show... Broadway type show on a Disney cruise line. Mm-hmm. And in both of those shows, there's this dramatic and absolutely mind blowing dress transformation mm-hmm. where it's like, she goes from one dress to another dress in a millisecond. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, Oh yes, they're going to do this. I didn't know that they were going to do it. I was just looking for it and hoping. And then I was like, Oh man, too bad they didn't do that. And then what, how'd you find, you found out online. I saw a did? clip on TikTok where yeah. it shows like her, a zoom like in. yeah a really hd zoom in of her and you can see that they basically 
add a dress on top of her other dress that is the transformation dress. Here's the problem, though. The, they light her very dramatically in the beginning of the Show Yourself sequence of Fantasmic. She's in this blue and purple wash. Uh-huh. And then when the transformation happens, they light her very bright with these white lights. And so you're just like, oh, okay, she's lit up now. You don't even know yeah. that she changed dresses. But if you look beyond the light and you look at the actual clothing she's wearing, it's very clear that she's wearing two different dresses. It's just because of the lighting, you just can't even tell that anything changed because you just think, well, now yeah. she's actually just lit. Maybe it was time. a first night thing. Because I was going to say. I mean, say, it could have been a placement, light Disney placement. Does, Disney does it. do this thing where they sometimes will make slight tweaks to things as they go. Yeah. And I'm thinking maybe they'll this tweak that. Better. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, because, you know, I can't go too hard on something on the first time, I sure, suppose. Sure. But I guess it does speak to the fact that we did enjoy it because oh, yeah. we were nitpicking. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We were like, well, we that do. was kind of a flop. But, like, everything, be- because everything else was so enjoyable other than the potentially, I would say, stale animation segments right. that happened. But the characters were really, like, the the human characters playing you, fantastic yeah fantastic. yeah the like they, face yeah aladdin that was a new section yeah right? there was an aladdin they part. took away the villain from pocahontas but then gave pocahontas a different song yeah than, than before and i thought that worked really well it they added really some well. projections of leaves and i thought thought it was really beautiful i liked i liked the mulan segment i didn't love the part of mulan they picked i thought the do du- the, the fighting the sparring was like a random sparring that's yeah I, I get they were trying to replicate the because that was kind of a Training fight scene. a fight scene mm-hmm. in Pocahontas that they took out. Oh, I see. So they're kind of trying to replace that with something as high energy. I just don't know that this was the thing to pick. Um, but I did I do love that song. I'll make a man out of you. I love that song too. I thought that was like such a cool like high energy inclusion to put there. So I guess it did work in that way. Um, I just thought. It was that was a one moment where I thought, okay, those two little people down there sparring because you're there far away. It just didn't give that huge impact. I think more people on the stage would have helped. You know what I mean? I thought maybe some way to make it. I'd love a Mushu. Big energy. Oh, Mushu. (laughs) That. that. Oh, you know what they should have done? They could have done that would have been really cool. Friend like me, where they had Genie replicate himself a hundred times yeah. or whatever. Imagine like fifty genies <laughs> on the stage. That would have been really cool to see. Hard to coordinate, but yeah, I feel like they yeah, could do it. They could do it. They could do it. But anyway, yeah. So the the new live sections of Fantasma, because that's what you were saying. We liked. We lot. liked it a lot. Yeah. There were there were when it was all said and done. I I was hoping that they would make some bigger jumps technology wise. Yeah. Because I know that they can, mm-hmm. because I've seen shows on Cruise Line. I've seen, you know what I mean? I, I know that they With can. With better technology. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought, oh, you've been shut down. How long have they been shut down? A long, two years it's been since Fantasmic, yeah. I think. Or three even. Maybe. But maybe it's two. Okay. So um, they've been shut down for a while. They said they've made some changes and they're coming back. I expected a jump in technology, not to feel like I was watching a 1990s and there were moments where it reads like that, you know. Yes. Um, the other thing I was holding out hope for that they might update was that in our Fantasmic, the Maleficent dragon Which is, is awesome, right? Is awesome. Is a dragon head. Yeah. And these arms that are like big sparkly curtains that they also project things onto. Mm-hmm. In Disneyland, this is a spoiler. <laughs> They have an actual animatronic dragon. Oh. A huge Is it like the one we have in a parade? Yes. What's the what's that one? What's the parade? Yeah. Yeah. The, the um Festival of Fantasy parade. Yeah, right. At the end and it blows drag. It blows fire. It, at the end they have a really cool steampunk um, maleficent dragon that blows fire. It is kind of like that, but it it looks much more like the dragon from the movie. It's just, imagine the dragon from the movie, the Maleficent dragon from the movie. They just made one. They just made a really big one. Wow. Which is really impressive. Yeah. So I was really hoping for that yeah. to get added to ours. Right. But it is the classic yeah. Maleficent dragon that's just the head and the arms. So that was the only other thing I was hoping might happen that didn't happen. I was like, well, it's still cool because they did add 
they added some projection mapping onto the dragon mm -hmm. that was like the flames, the green yeah. flames right. that I thought looked really cool. They also added some lightning type projections yeah. that looked really cool on the dragon. I feel like the the biggest wow moments in Fantasmic, and they were still really wow, were um, the still the same stuff that they've had. Yeah, I well, I like for me, this is for. But it does speak to, like, them adding new stuff. The Frozen moment for me, like, made me absolutely love the show. Like, what I was... Frozen? I mean, like, what show specifically? The ho that Just her singing. Yeah. The scene. Okay, but you are obsessed happened. with Frozen. <laughs> exactly, but so are a lot of people. I know, I know. You know what I mean? So, but like... I mean, like, from a... I, I, well, I guess I, I am saying, like, from a, oh, my gosh, I didn't see that coming. Like, the dragon. Mm -hmm. The big dragon. Now, actually, my favorite part of the Maleficent... Yeah, the, the Jafar snake is really... My... Favorite part of the Maleficent sequence was when Maleficent like raises into the air and right. like she gets super tall right. <laughs> for a minute. Like, I thought that was still so impressive, even though it's been there the whole time. I was gonna here. say, but that's not new, right? No, that's not new, but that just seeing that moment where she like levitates off the floor and then transforms into the dragon, like, I still think that's the yeah, I do too. I just expected a a boost in technology. Oh, sure. Yeah, I don't, yeah. But, but it, that We're is a great show. We're talking about, like, either drones or some type of, like, leveled. Yes. Um, there's this current technology that's kind of having a boom in the entertainment industry that's this layered projection thing. And mm -hmm. they do it a little bit in the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Uh, so in the pre-show of that ride, oh, yeah, the yeah, Glenn yeah. Close part, they've got this field of like stars, stars and then behind it they've got a video playing and right. that's like a layered projection right. a lot of people were thinking that maybe that was the kind of technology that was going to come to phantasmic too so you could have like layers of effects that, that would be happens. very cool that, and somebody somebody around us when we were sitting there went oh i see the drones and then i, I like freaked out i was like oh my gosh this is going to be amazing they put drones in it but it was just lights that yeah. person was mistaking so. and disneyland paris their nighttime spectacular is drone based There's they, a, yeah. they do the castle projection thing and fireworks and all of that but they also have in front of their castle a moat so they also do the water stuff that uh -huh. they do in phantasmic and world of color over right. in california adventure so they're doing the water projections the castle projections, fireworks, and drones, all awesome. in the same show. Yes. So people had that level of expectation for what Fantasmic was going to be, which I think whenever I'm doing a new Disney thing, I always think, keep your expectations low, because that's how you'll be happy. Yeah. But I do also appreciate the idea that you can spend a little money on us. You, yeah. could, you could get fancy with us, too, if you wanted. Maybe they're saving that for one of the other two nighttime shows that are coming. coming we're holding out hope yes yes and when we see them then we will let you know and all of that being said phantasmic was still a good show phantasmic I, is currently my favorite nighttime spectacular yes mine too and it but for me it has a lot to do with the fact that i could see <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a huge part of it um so yeah there are really two things to judge a nighttime show by at walt disney world comfort and accessibility and you know the con the content the of content, the show right, itself. Exactly. And for me, I think Fantasmic, the content is good, the comfort is great. Yeah. You know, the accessibility is fantastic. Right. So there you go. Yes. Um, well, that's just kind of what we think about some of the different, or the different current nighttime shows at Walt Disney World. Yeah. This is in we the We are next... also hoping eventually we get a nighttime parade, but right cool. now we don't. One day, One day, we'll get back the Main Street Electrical Parade. Mm -hmm. We'll get Spectral Magic again. They'll give us Paint the Night. Like, the, the list of things. Just give that, us one of them. The list of things that we could have is endless. Meanwhile, we have nothing at all. Um, <laughs> no. But, you know, hopefully one day that will change. And as these new nighttime spectaculars come around, you know, we'll, we'll tell you kind of what we think about each and maybe give you some tips and tricks for viewing like we kind of did for yeah and you know, and if you have to pick one. one it's gonna really depend on what you like and how tall you are. oh yeah <laughs> i mean if you're spending a full day in in each of these parks i would recommend seeing each of them because all of them are good shows it's i would say the one that i would least recommend though at the moment would just be enchantment just because of how difficult it is I would say for the for anyone to get because whether you do the dessert party whether you get there early you still might have a bad view of the show even if you get there early i mean there's so yeah 
Yes, yeah. you're absolutely right. Also, get it, then leaving after is a wild nightmare that right. we've talked about a lot. So, so as Happily Ever After comes back, maybe we'll see if they can utilize Main Street in a way that improves that situation. Um, the viewing situation, I mean. I don't mean the exit situation. I think that's always going to be what it is. Unless what they add is. more transportation That'd options. be great. Yeah. Put the Skyliner in Magic Kingdom. It's I believe in you. Thing. Yeah. All right. Um, for now, anyway, thank you guys so much for listening or for watching along on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Please make sure that you subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review if you've enjoyed listening along. We would really appreciate it. It helps us a lot. It helps us a lot. Yeah. yeah. And if you'd like to follow along with us on social media, they can do that. Absolutely. Yep. It's at Neverland Navco. And then they can um, follow us online as well at our website. Yeah, NeverlandNavigation.co. Yeah. That's... that's We've got links to all of our social stuff from there and also the blog. Um and then we've got the Etsy store, which is Neverland Navigation on Etsy. Yeah, if you're is that everything. Yeah, I think that's everything. We There's do a lot, lot to cover, but um, thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you on our next adventure. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.